By the time Chad and Mandy Stacy took the long, painful walk through the cemetery to see where they would bury their son, Ethan Stacy was within days of death. Already under the care of a hospice nurse, Ethan's fragile body was shutting down. Ethan had AML, which is a very aggressive type of leukemia. Dr. Melissa Rhodes serves in the oncology unit at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. She is one of Ethan's physicians. Children who are actually born with leukemia don't usually do very well. The best we could offer is, was to put Ethan through difficult chemotherapy and still not know that he would make it through. In fact, chemo is so toxic for newborns the doctors gave Chad and Mandy the option not to treat their son. Chemo could kill him just going through that. There's all kinds of risks. We came home and I remember laying in bed and praying and we said, you know, God give us an answer. And we both woke up the next morning and both said, no, we're not, not going to put him through it. After two weeks in the hospital, Chad and Mandy made the painful decision to bring their son home. Most doctors at Vanderbilt supported that decision. We figured if Ethan truly had the kind of leukemia that we felt he had, uh, even with full treatment, he may not do well. And for that reason, we thought it was, it was right to honor the family's decision. After only a few days at home, though, Ethan's baby acne, which is common in newborns, had become infected. So back they went to the hospital. That's when the tumors began to show up. We noticed a lump in his calf, and we paged the doctor, and they came in and, you know, and, and told us that it could be a blood clot or a buildup of the leukemia cells. Tumors started popping up in other places. Feet. His hands and his forearm. Leukemia itself means cancer of the blood. It's a, it's a blood disease, but in this particular kind of leukemia, it can also go out into the tissues. Um, and we believe that's what was happening with Ethan, that he actually had leukemia in his skin, in his hands, in his feet, in his legs, um, as well as in his liver and his spleen, which is more common. So he was showing that he had very advanced disease at that point. Ethan was now about three weeks old. Chad and Mandy did what they could to comfort their son and they prayed. I just pray that his will be done and and if he passed away or if he lived that it would be the Lord's will because that's all that matters. I know that he can get us through. If he, if he took him, he would get us through it. By this time, Ethan was three weeks old when he took his final turn for the worse. This time, he stopped eating and began to experience sleep apnea. When Chad left for work early that morning, he had no idea just how sick his son had become. And Mandy was trying to call me and call me. But she couldn't get through. That's when he started not, not breathing, you know. And uh, I don't know if God give her that time to make her just to go through that herself or I just wasn't there when I should be. And I called Vanderbilt and said, you know, what do I do if something happens? And they told me not to call, you know, not to call 911 and to call them first. And I said, what should, what should I expect? And she, the nurse told me Oh, several ways that day would pass. She told me that he, would, he might develop what's called sepsis, which would be a, just a total body infection, and that he would go peacefully, or that he might um, hemorrhage, which then I would see blood in his diaper, maybe coming out of his ears. <laughs> And I was so scared every time to open up his diaper. Uh, for Ethan to have a day where he didn't eat anything, he was heavily, having trouble breathing, he was actually needing oxygen, it, those are all things that we see in children as they are ready to die. The, one of the biggest signs is not wanting to eat or drink, not tolerating anything, 
not waking up, um, children sleep more, and then have episodes called apnea where they actually don't take a breath for 20, 30, 40 seconds. Ethan was doing all of those things, which is typical of a child who's getting ready to die. They told the hospice nurse that we needed to, you know, make arrangements and that it was probably time to call in the family if we wanted them to be present when he passed. But Chad, Mandy, and their friends continued to pray, believing God for the impossible. That day I remember rocking him and singing, and it was, uh, I was singing, open the eyes to my heart, Lord. I want to see you because I knew that if I just focus my mind on Christ, that that's the only way that I could make it through it. That night, the night that Ethan's life nearly ended, something happened. Late that night, probably around midnight, he started feeding. He started taking his bottle a little bit at a time. The next day, Ethan was a little stronger. But was he having one final rebound before he died? Or was something else happening? I remember we just, I remember sitting at the kitchen table and us saying to each other, you know, I believe God's healing him. It was almost like he was on his deathbed that day. I saw him gasping for air and he was even blue. His lips were blue. And then he just gradually started getting better. And over the next week, you know, we were back up to six ounces of formula over three hours. Over the next two weeks, Ethan improved. And when Mandy took him back to Vanderbilt to check on his blood counts... You know, his platelets were increasing little by little. And, and the day that I requested a second opinion, Dr. Rhodes came in and she had his platelet level circled with a big red magic marker and she said there's no need for a second opinion because his platelet level was like 415,000 in normal range where it had been like 39,000 at his lowest point. This development stumped Dr. Rhodes and her colleagues. Ethan had gotten about as sick as a baby could possibly get and then spontaneously got better so we wanted to look, was there still evidence of leukemia in Ethan? And we did the bone marrow test, which showed no evidence of leukemia. And as for the tumors in his legs and hands and feet? Which just gradually went down over a period of probably a week or so. It was just remarkable to witness it. So when did you know that you had witnessed a miracle? They repeated the bone marrow biopsy on July the 9th. I guess that confirmed it. Today, Ethan Stacy is a strapping three-year-old who loves playing with his dad and big sister Kaylee. And it goes without saying that the Stacys are thankful. Prayers of my friends and church members meant everything to me. I mean, God answered prayers. It's just awesome that we have a God like that. I just can't wait to see what God has in store for him because I know it's going to be big. <laughs> and as for Dr. Rhodes, what does she think happened to Ethan? For him to have gotten as absolutely sick as he did and then just turn around spontaneously overnight, uh, that's a miracle.